I have uh, I have my Instagram going live right now, and I also have Instagram going live right now. So um, I'm super excited um, to be going uh, live right now and talking about the one thing that means something to everyone. We're going to be talking about uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs, right? And so uh, for those of you who do not know uh, what Maslow hierarchy of needs is, it was is a theory that was created by Maslow, right? And he was saying that in order for for anyone to be able to go to the next level on any on on according to his theory, they must have these particular things, right? So it's a pyramid. Some of you guys have seen it. It's a pyramid, right? And you can't go up to self actualization unless, right? You met at the bottom. And I actually agree with Maslow hierarchy hierarchy of needs. And I think that it actually helps out quite a bit. And I believe that if more people follow Maslow hierarchy of needs, uh, they would be, they would progress a little bit more in life, right? And I'll use my own self as an example because I've been uh, one who thought that I could skip steps. And because I thought I could skip steps, what happened was uh, it, it caused more, more, more hardship in my life, right? So we're gonna start first, right? What does this have to do with you as a person? Why does this matter? Why should this matter to you? How does it impact your life? And um, how can you use this to actually help take your le your life to, a to another level? All right, so let's get into it. So when we think about Maslow hierarchy of needs, the first level is a, a physiological needs, right? So let's go over that. I got my notes right here. What exactly does that mean? That means... Food, shelter, clothing, right? Um, air, water, etc. That is how you are going to take care of yourself. All right. So food, shelter, and clothing. Why is that so important? All right, let's just break this down. All right, let's 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 break this down. You got let's say you're an individual, right? Now let's say let's talk, let's talk about it from a relationship standpoint first. From relationship, let's let's first start relationship standpoint. You're individual. You're I don't know. You're seeking a relationship. You you, you figure, hey, I want to be in a relationship, but you are homeless. You have no way of taking care of yourself. You do not have shelter, and uh, your basic needs are not met. Now, my my good one of my good friends, uh, he has a. Instagram page and he he always he he has his model where he says um what does he say he say uh, uh stop having kids broke that's it he he's just blunt with it I, I'm at least nice about it he's very blunt he says stop having kids broke right and so when I always think about relationships that I always think about that don't have kids broke right and I wish someone would have told me that um I wasn't broke broke when I had kids but I wasn't I didn't have money I wasn't in a position to be having children right but again. Uh, you're now seeking a relationship. You're like, okay, I'm ready to get things going. I don't want to be alone. You don't have food. You don't have shelter. You don't have clothing. You don't have no way of providing for yourself. Now you get into a relationship with a person. Now, there are two different ways you can look at this. Now, the next question is, is this a male or is this a, or is it, or is this a female? Because it's two different outcomes and two different ways that people view this. If you are a man... How do you think people view this? They look at you like, oh my God, this man has the audacity to want to be in a relationship with me and I'm going to have to take care of him. There are some people that say, I'll do it. But after so long, they eventually, right, they begin to feel like, all right, what are you bringing to the table? It cost me more, right? So the relationship starts to fall apart because you decided that you wanted to skip it and go straight to safety needs, right? On Maslow hierarchy of needs. The second step in Maslow hierarchy of needs is friendship, intimacy, family, right? A uh, sense of connection. Basically, is love and belonging. You skipped your basic needs and went straight to the next one. The problem is this is how uh, uh, families begin to fall apart. Uh, this is how relationships begin to end. A lot of times, this is even how domestic violence starts, right? One person uh, has more than the other. And so they use that as a power struggle. They use it in a sense to, to take advantage of people. They use it 
in a sense of, oh, you don't have food, you don't have shelter, you don't have clothing? Oh, I'll provide that for you for a small fee, right? Hand out, small fee, right? And so it's so important that before we get in any type of relationship, whether it's intimate relationship, friendship, or whatever, we must be able to take care of ourselves. We must, absolutely must be able to take care of ourselves. Um, uh, skips now, yeah. Yeah, talk, talk. Uh, so I, I encourage you all, the first thing you want to do is you want to take care of your food, shelter, and clothing. This even goes for, now we're talking about re relationship in the sense of a business. Can you imagine attempting to start a business and you don't have the basics taken care of? In your life, the basics are not taken care of. And so now you're trying to do something. That is actually a great idea, but your basics are not being taken care of. How can you, how can you actually begin something when you don't even know where you're going to sleep at? Now, some people might say, oh, I use that as motivation. Oh, that's motivation for me. I ain't got nowhere to sleep. That's motivation. That, that's not the case um, a lot of times. It's very hard to think about some of your best ideas when you're hungry. Some of our best ideas actually come when we have a full stomach or something in our stomach, water, we have a place to, uh, to stay, whether, whether it's your place or not, All right? Again, so the, the, the basics have to be met. When we think about it, even from the, from the perspective of the black community, right, um, a lot of times uh, people are fighting for uh, social uh, integration. I care nothing about social integration. I care about economic integration. Why do I care so much about economic integration? Because economic integration allows me to get the bare basics, food, shelter, and clothing. Social integration, meaning, oh, well, you, I want to sit at the same restaurants as you. What that does is that actually skips Maslow's hierarchy of needs and goes straight uh, from, uh, uh, from food, shelter, and clothing. It goes straight to safety and needs, sa safety needs, meaning... Right, uh, a, a sense of belonging, uh, uh, employment, security, you know, etc., safety. That's what social integration does. But economic integration allows us to have be able to provide for ourselves. And and when even when you go back and you look at history, there was a time when, um, hey, if this is skipping on Instagram, make sure you go to. Uh, YouTube. I'm live on YouTube, and my YouTube is Shade Burrell, and it'll pop right on up. But again, economic integration allows us to meet those basic needs. No problem if you want to start start a business, but again, how can you? It's very hard when you don't even have a place to write down your business plan at. It's very hard when uh, when there's no food in your stomach to help your brain think, to help your brain go to a whole nother level. Right. So we absolutely have to protect our food, shelter, and clothing before anything else. Before anything else, we have to do that. So again, so I, when we think about it from the different perspectives, whether it's an intimate relationship, friendship, etc. Uh, you know, I was, I'm on these travel pages a lot. Um, and and I, they're really funny. They have these funny memes. And they said, uh, black people are always friends until after the trip. After they go on a trip, and someone say, "Well, why? Why aren't they friends after after the trip? Because you always have that one person who goes on the trip broke, right? Y'all y'all went on a trip, and this person got a hundred dollars, and y'all supposed to be gone for three weeks, and now you got to pay for them to eat. Otherwise, they don't eat. They gonna have an attitude in the hotel room, try to ruin everything. Oh, I can't go with y'all. I can't do this. I can't do that, All right? And they always got a reason. And so now you guys aren't friends because that person didn't bring no money on the trip. So again, like, like they skipped everything. Like, oh, I'm going on a vacation, but I didn't pay my rent. I'm going on a vacation, but I know my lights is going to be cut off. I'm going to uh, donate, and I know that I have no money to feed myself nor, nor, nor my family. Got my, all right, got your pen and paper ready to go. Aloha. Um, nevertheless, Right? These needs absolutely must be taken care of before you do anything. You have to. 
So let's think about it even from a topic that I'm very familiar with, with which is working with foster youth. Well, let's think about it from foster youth perspective, right? What, why is it, all right, when they enter foster homes, they have to make sure that these, that these uh, they're supposed to legally, at least in San Diego, they're legally supposed to ensure that these homes are safe and that they have a bed, they have clothing, and they have food. These three things must be met before anyone can become a foster parent. You cannot tell them this child's going to sleep here on the floor, at least in San Diego. Now, there are a few places, a whole, no, that's, I'm sorry, not a few. There are a lot of places here in America that do not, allow, they would say, hey, you guys can sleep on a cot. A cot and three hots, right? Ain't that what they say in prison? A cot and three hots. That means a, a bed and, and three meals for those of you who are, who are unaware of what that means. So you have to have the basics met. Like I said, imagine being in, a, in, a, in an intimate relationship with someone and you cannot afford anything. Like you, At this point, you can't even afford to laugh because if you laugh, they like, how much you got on, uh, on the dinner? How, about, how, how can you contribute? How can you contribute? As a person, it does something to our self-esteem when we don't have those three food, shelter, and clothing taken care of. It's very hard to pursue an intimate relationship when you don't have those things taken Even harder to pursue a business relationship when you don't have those things taken care of. You must be able to provide food, shelter, and clothing for yourself. Air and water as well. Without those things, you cannot go on. Let's talk about the next level. Again, the next level is safety needs, right? So this is personal security, employment, resources, health, and property, right? So this is personal security, employment, resources, health, and property. Now you got your food, shelter, and, and, and clothing to take care of. You got your air. You got clean water, which is why the whole Flint – oh, let me go back. The Flint situation is such a big deal because – Again, their, their basic needs weren't being met in America. In America was not being met. Can you believe that? In America, they weren't being met. So how can they go on? So oh, well, Detroit, Flint, Michigan, and Detroit is a mess. It's just, it fell all off. It's a lot of crime. It's a lot of, of course there's crime. These people don't even have clean water. They don't even have clean water. So what I want you to do is, I want you to focus on getting the basics first, food, shelter, clothing, air, water. That's what I want you to focus on, those things first. And then from there, then we're able to go up to the next one. Again, safety needs, personal security. That means being able to protect yourself, employment, being able to seek a job. Did you know that there are some jobs that won't even hire you if you don't have an address? Now, I live in a very democratic uh, state. Anytime election season come, uh, my state turns blue. Now you come, you live in states like Texas, Florida, right? You, uh, the conservative uh, states that are red, those particular states, they have no mercy for you. Oh, you don't, you don't have nowhere to live and you're trying to apply here? Oh, no, 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 no. You need, you need an address on where, where we can uh, contact you at. They, they have no sympathy. So, uh, Make sure that you're able to, uh, and health, right? Your health, it has to be, um, I, I know a lot of people who have a lot of health issues. A lot of people, I know a lot of people who have a lot of health issues. Um, and uh, you have two types of people, right? Because the next level is going to be love and, love and belonging. This is when you get into the friendships, intimate relationship, et cetera. But again, we're, we're on safety. If your health is not doing well, now I don't want you guys to get so caught up on, 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 um, on, on what health exactly is. So I'm gonna just break it down to you, right? If you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you that you are unhealthy, you have to focus on that. That has to be something. You have your food, you have your clothing, you have your water. Now you have to focus on your health. You have to, because if you don't, imagine diabetes taking over your life. You're getting your toe cut off. It, has anyone ever tried to walk with four toes? It's, it's hard to walk, walk, walk with four toes. Very hard. Very hard. But if you neglect your health after you've been warned 
that, hey, if you don't do these particular things, you are going to not be here anymore. So again, we, you know, where you work at actually impacts your health too. I have a friend who told me, hey, I was fine during the whole COVID-19 thing because their job was shut down. And when the job was shut down, she was doing absolutely amazing. But the moment that she had to return physically back to work, oh, her inside started hurting again. And she was in a lot of pain. And um, she was feeling as if she uh, was like dying inside. Right. She felt like she was dying inside. And why was she feeling like she was dying inside? Because she worked the employment, uh, I mean, a job where they were taking her health. They were taking all her resources. And people say, well, I got to work something. I can't just do nothing. You're 100 percent right. You do need to be able to work something. But that is why it's so important to figure out how can you get connected to someone or something and uh, in order for you to level up so that you don't have to be in a field of work where you hate it. People are like, well, Sade, not everyone is able to do that. Not everyone. That's a lie from the pits of hell, and I refuse to accept it. Here's the reason why it's a lie. We now, the majority, almost everyone has a cell phone. Everyone, including homeless people. Obama dropped them phones about four or five years ago, right? He dropped them phones about four or five years ago. Everyone has a phone. Everyone has access to a library to be able to go to the library to research. You think what you can find, you know how many amazing people I've met off Instagram? Amazing people. Some of the best people I know I've met off Instagram. I've met uh, people who uh, helped me take my business to another level off Instagram. Never met some of them in person. Never met. You know how many people? Here's the story. Brian. Byram, the one who does all my, my uh, YouTube videos, the guy who does all my websites, and he does pretty much every, the majority of my speaking again, he does most of them. I met him from YouTube. I seen a video that he did, and I liked the video. I said, hey, man, do you do this for some? Do you do this for other people? He said, yeah. I met him from YouTube, and now I've known him since 2014. I've known him for six years now. All right. I've flown him out to do some video work for me and my speaking engagements. We did L.A. and we did Kansas City to, together. So we it's not that we don't have access. I believe that it's that we don't know how to take advantage of the things that we do have access to. So uh, let me give you guys another example with health. Uh, for the past, I don't know, my daughter's 10. Uh, my son is 8. So for the past um, 8 to 10 years, right, uh, I had two kids. And I haven't been in the best shape since we've been on quarantine. I have lost 17 pounds by working out because I have my food, shelter, clothing, water and all that stuff taken care of air. That stuff is taken care of. But again, like when we think about the next one, which is safety needs, I did not have my health together. The doctor never told me I was unhealthy. I didn't need a doctor to tell me I was unhealthy. Every time I got in the shower and I had to look at my stomach, I'm like, oh, man, something ain't right. I don't think my stomach's supposed to be like that. So because I knew that someone right and I couldn't run a mile. I could not run a mile. I could not run two laps like going. And so I, I took um, control of my life and I joined a program uh, that did not force me to like, oh, you can't eat. You can't do this. You can't do that. I worked out like two, three times a day. I had nothing else to do. And I wish somebody would say, oh, well, not everyone has a freedom to work out two, three times. You ain't a nurse. You ain't a doctor. You weren't even working at the places that were open. You know, uh, some of us were just sitting at home and people thought it was funny to say, oh, I'm gaining the cor uh, the quarantine 10. That wasn't funny or cute. You're messing up your health. You're mess And then you're messing up this health, your mental health. The more I began to weigh, the more I started mentally start messing up myself. You start messing your own self up. And then that clouds your judgment, which means now you're doing stupid stuff like putting your safety at risk. You have no safety uh, cues anymore because your mental's all messed up, because your physical's all messed up, your emotional uh, uh, ability to take care of yourself all messed up. All of it's messed up. All right? 
So we have to say, I have to take advantage of it. This is pretty much the only time I'll be alive. I hope it's the only time that I'm ever alive where we have to go through this quarantine stuff. Um, but I took full advantage. I've been reading. I've been writing. I've been losing weight. 17 pounds I done lost. I lost 17 pounds. A lot of people be like, Shadi, how you lose 17 pounds? You ain't even look like you had 17 pounds on you. Oh, I had 17 pounds. Go, hang it out. What? I start, I went for, I, about um, two months ago, I went for my first run. I was able to run two miles. I ran two miles. I, I, I can run two. I probably can do three now, but I just, I ain't challenging myself. It's time for me to challenge myself. But again, we're over, I had to take care of those particular things in order to get myself right. When my physical is off, my mental is off too. That's the way I work. When my physical is off, my mental is off too. My emotions are off. I can't take advantage of opportunities. Uh, speaking of opportunity, I'll just plug, shameless plug. It's my book, The Opportunity Guy. If you have not picked this up, please pick it up. I'm going to show you how great this book is. You can turn any page. Look, I just turned any page. Look at it. I just turned any page on my book. I just put any page. Let me just read to you. Okay. This is a prerequisite. This one is a provide, provide valuable service. This is a shameless plug. I got commercials in my in my stuff. Right, it says, prerequisite, make it hard for them to replace you. Your work ethic and value you bring should be so great, the company, person, or organization would consider firing 10 janitors before they ever consider releasing you. Most people aren't successful with maintaining their opportunities because once they receive the opportunity, they think the hard part is over. They'll become complacent and stop adding value. Ooh, how can I tie that into what I just said? We become stuck at where we are, where we are. Now my physical messed up, my mental messed up. I can't take advantage of no opportunities. Ooh, God forbid I decide to read my book. What are you reaching for? I can't. Let me just read a page from here. Oh, oh Lord. I, you know what? Somebody, somebody cash at me right now. Shade Burrell. I know what's my cash app. Burrell Sade. Somebody cash at me. Look, I just turned the page. All my books are fire. It says how to reach when you have nothing left. Ooh, how to reach when you have nothing left. You haven't even had, you have not, you are not following Maslow hierarchy of need. Your safety is not taken care of. You have not taken care of your physiological need. You don't have food. You don't have uh, uh, shelter. You don't have nowhere to sleep. You don't have no clothing. You don't have clean air. You don't have water. You don't have nothing, right? How can, how to reach when you have nothing left? Woo, I've been writing about this stuff, y'all. You ain't got my book, so I'm ain't right with you. And I'm gonna question, I'm gonna question your judgment. You ain't got my book. Something wrong with you. You ain't you ain't following Maslow hierarchy of need. I think somewhere in Maslow hierarchy hierarchy of needs it says something like purchase Shade Burrell book on www.shadeburrell.com. Uh, if you purchase it right now, matter of fact, by the time I get off this live, if you purchase one of my books right now, I'll throw in a free T-shirt right now. So it's uh five twenty six right now. By the time I get off this live, if you purchase one of my one of my uh. One of my books, I'll go ahead and throw a free T-shirt in there for you, all right? Um, so that, that's a special deal for you all, a special deal uh, for you all. Uh, nevertheless, let me go back into it. So now you done got your food, shelter, and clothing taken care. You done got yourself a J-O-B, just over broke job, right? Um, then you done got yourself, now your security's taken care. You done physically taken care of yourself. You done, you done got yourself right, money tight. Empl employment, you got you got the resources. Your health is doing well. Ain't nobody telling you you on the verge of diabetes and your toe getting cut off. Nobody's telling you that. You're in a safe neighborhood, as safe as can be, whatever safe is to you. Because you could be in any neighborhood if you got if you if you practice your Second Amendment right, the right to bear arms. No matter where you live. All right, let's go on to the next one. You didn't got yourself together. Now it's time for you to get yourself in a relationship, y'all. Woo, get your little boo thing. I know some of y'all been waiting for that one. Some of y'all been waiting for somebody to tell you it's okay for you to get yourself a boo thing, right? But again, and, and a friendship. Friendship. So uh, again, the, the third one is love and belonging. And that's friendship, intimacy, family, a sense of connection. That's a sense. And, and to be honest with you, that's a, 
that's a let me that, that that's a that's a, a nice version of that one. Let me see. Let me let me go to another one because it's another version that says something completely different. I want I want to read that one. Yeah, so on this one, this is actually I'm I'm looking for a word specifically for a word, uh, and I want to make sure I use the word right. Uh, oh, it ain't gonna pop up. Is it gonna pop up? All right, intimate relationship. All right, okay, so we're on the third one. Intimate relationship, so belonging and, and, and belongingness and and love and needs. Right. So now we're on this one. Let's get into that. I know some of y'all been waiting for this one. Love and belonging. This is a time for you. To start building relationships in a sense and friendships and things like that, intimate relationship, etc. The reason why it's so important um, for you again to follow these steps because it's hard to be a good friend when you're constantly having to ask for anything, favors or whatever it is, right? A reciprocal relationship. Shall they don't look? No. Oh. Yo. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Xavier. Xavier just said, Shade, don't look now, but somebody walking through your through your wall. You better stop lying to me. You better stop lying. It's already an owl back here making a noise, so I'm already paranoid, boy. I tell you one thing, I practice my Second Amendment right, the right to bear arms. Come around here. Might be on the news, and it won't be me. It won't turn me into a hashtag. Nevertheless, right, so... Friendships. So now we're establishing these friendships, right? And these friendships that we're establishing, right? It's because, again, we've already met the first uh, two levels. So now I can build a reciprocal relationship with people. I can build a reciprocal relationship, meaning you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Versus before, had I built this relationship before then, you scratching my back. And I ain't got a hand to scratch with. Look, Xavier got me paranoid now. Boy, he didn't got me paranoid. I'm turning around and stuff. Yo, oh, got me tripping. So reciprocal relationships are so important. A another way of saying reciprocal relationship is a mutual re relationship, uh, friendship, where I'm giving just as much as you're giving. And while things may not always be equal, I think it's your art. Oh, oh, he talking about my art. Oh, man, Xavier, you better leave me alone. Man, that, my mama gave that to me. My mama, who's your cousin, gave that to me. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you scared me. Lord have mercy. Uh, nevertheless, now you're able to have those, 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 those. There you go. Now we're able to have those those friendships where um it's mutual. So I got a few people on, on this live right now who who are who are my friends, and we have a very mutual relationship. And what I've noticed from my friends, you know, they ain't asking me to come stay with me. First of all, don't nobody ever want to come stay with me. Like we literally wake up in the morning on some positivity stuff. You wake up with attitude, go back to bed. I, you know, like Meek Mill said, how you wake up in the morning feeling evil? Go to sleep. I will not entertain someone who is not on the same page as this household. And this household is always on positivity at times, right? Um, and so yeah, imagine someone asking like, hey, yo, can I, can I stay with you? And you're like, all right, that's cool. First few weeks, you're like, all right, you, you, know, you good, you good. Second week, you're like, yes, you good, you good. First month. Go by, second month go by, six months go by. They show no progress. Now it's like, oh, hold on. Oh, someone, oh, someone just bought a book. Who bought a book? Comment below. Who just I got some two people just bought a book. Whoever just bought a book, let me know your shirt size. Two people just bought a book. <laughs> Who bought the books? Who bought the books? School is in session. You know what? I'm going to start doing these lives only for people who bought the book. Who bought the books? Comment below. If you bought the book, I got the, it just came in. 
It just came in. I'm going to the postal office tomorrow to mail your stuff off. Your stuff will be mailed off. You know what? Because you listened and you took advantage of the opportunity, I'm going to throw in something else for free. I'm going to throw in my mother's motivating mother's pen for you for free. That's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to throw in that. And if you don't know about mother's motivating mothers, oh, you ain't ready. This is mother M3. Mother's motivating mothers. Oh, man. So if you're a father, don't worry. Give it to your wife, your girlfriend, baby mama, your sister, your cousin. I don't care who you give it to. But you will get something. Shout out to whoever just purchased it. The email just came in. You will get a free T-shirt. And so I need your T-shirt size. And I will give you a pin that says Mother's Motivating Mothers. And you will get your book. Shout out to you. Mind you, I only have a few more copies of this one. I got maybe like 50 more copies of this one. And we completely changed the co cover. Um, completely changed the cover. Um, so this is going to be a vintage. Let's get back on track what we were talking about. Again, so now, now you're at a level where you're able to start dating people. You got for good friends in your life, friends who you can bring someone around. If you're dating somebody, bring them around your friends. If friends say they're crazy, run from them, okay? Uh, run from them, okay? Unless your friend is crazy too. Who is that supposed to be on the art? That's a black king. So who is that supposed to be? That's a black king. It's a black king. Who is that supposed to be? My people. Nevertheless, all right, so now you're able to get into a healthy relationship. I'm not saying that everything going to be peaches and stuff like that and, oh, you got yourself a job, you got food, shelter, and clothing, but it's a little bit easy. It's a lot less to deal with when you have these things taken care of, when you have a job, when you have a place to stay because there are some people that, that live with people that are in relationships not because they love that person or they want to be with that person. They're in a relationship because they need shelter. They're in a relationship because they need shelter. If, hey, by the way, guys, if if this thing is skipping, please go to my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube, Sade Burrell, and I'm live on YouTube. I'm live on YouTube. So if 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 the YouTube works better for you and this Facebook be tripping sometime. But again, there are people who are in relationships because they need shelter. Baby, I don't love you. I love your house. Baby, I don't love you. I love your blanket. Baby, I don't love you. I love how I got a key to your house, to your crib. There are people who are stuck in relationships because they can't, they can't afford to live out, uh, uh, move out on their own. But when you take care of the basics, food, shelter, clothing, right? We talk physiological needs first. Then you go into the safety need. We talked about that. You got your employment. Your health is kitted right. Ain't nobody telling you got diabetes or nothing like that, right? You, you, you're able to have resources. Now you can be in a healthy relationship where y'all not fighting over Domino's pizza. Well, I paid the pizza last time. Well, I got to pay for groceries this time. You didn't pay the light bill? Ain't nothing worse. Then being in a forced relationship because you're staying. I know a lot of people that stay because of a shelter. I know a lot of people who also got in a relationship and they said, you know, we don't have it all together, but we at least have the bare basics met. We don't have it all together, but we have the bare basics met. And so now we can focus on loving each other. Get this. There are some people who've been married for like 20 years. They've been married for 20 years. And they'll tell you their relationship has up, uh, ups and downs. But from the research that I've done and in, in, in interviews I've done with people, they said that they've been the happiest when they've had the most, uh, uh, when, when their lives were as stable as possible. Meaning that bills are being paid on time. Uh, they, they did have their food and shelter. They did have uh, their uh, uh, physical needs taken care of, right? And then again, love and belonging. It talks about intimacy. Now, if you go to Maslow hierarchy of need, it actually uses the word sex as opposed to the word intimacy. You can't be running around having sex with people and you're broke. Stop having sex and you're broke. <laughs> Up here, having sex and you're broke. Child, Lord have mercy. They having sex and they broke. Lord have mercy. Lord have, what has this world come to 
Well, this is where we, this is what we're doing. This is how you start having kids broke. Cause you're bored having sex broke. Now you're gonna be having kids broke. Cause you couldn't afford to buy the protection that you needed to protect yourself. All right, let I y'all ain't ready for that conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. Right? But this is actually, um, believe it or not, uh, and I use myself as an example, right? When I had was able to take care of my physical or my uh, physiological needs, such as food, shelter, and clothing, and my safety needs, I actually began building better relationships with my family. Um, uh, what I've noticed is that a lot of times there's a lot of turmoil in families, especially those who come from impoverished community, um, impoverished communities. Uh, it's because they, they constantly are having to struggle for everything. You're constantly having to struggle. Every time you turn around, they're struggling. So that's why, you know, the grandma fighting the daughter, right? The grandpa fighting the grandson, right? Because they're constantly fighting. And what I started to notice, even people in my own family, when they all began getting themselves together and whatever the sense of the word means, um, I noticed that we all became closer, right? Because no one's asking, hey, can I borrow some money? Hey, can I come stay with you? Hey, can I, not that that's not okay. It is okay if, if that, you know, if, if that's a, a temporary situation. But if every six months you're constantly having to borrow money, uh, ask for food and shelter and clothing and things like that, uh, people, beca people become irritated. And that's the truth. I don't care how close you are as a family. After a while, you get tired of somebody freeloading off of you. And you can, can you imagine working all day and you come home and somebody sitting on your couch watching TV? That feeling is a feeling that is like, it, 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 I can't even describe that feeling. When you work all day and you see someone sitting down on the couch talking about what's for dinner? Air. <laughs> That's what's for dinner air so my family began our relationship changed when my generation was able to get on a page where it's like all right we we not struggling no more we buy houses we start businesses we getting side gigs we doing this we doing that when we get married this is what we're doing uh our our definition began to change and like a lot of things begin we began to think a little bit more clear right all right, so let's go up to the, to the next one. Now we're on esteem. So this is respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, and freedom, right? So now you, you, you've you learned how to have self-respect. A lot of times when we when we skip steps, uh, what happens? Oh, oh, another book sale came in. Another book sale just came in. So who, who just bought the book? Whoever bought the book, just let me know. Oh, y'all showing out. <laughs> y'all showing out in high school today. Oh, somebody else just bought a book. It just popped up. The email just came in. Who just bought a book? Oh, y'all better cut it out. They just bought a book. They just bought a book. Bought it. Y'all better cut it. Y'all better cut it out. I'm telling y'all gonna mess around. Have me writing it. Oh, by the way, by the way, I do have an ebook dropping, and my kids have a book dropping too. Shout out to y'all. That's why y'all keep leaving the live because y'all going to go purchase the book. I see you. I see you. I see you. Purchasing the books. Let's go. This book is full of knowledge. Watch this. Let me show you how great this book. I turn any page. Look at it. Turn to page 55. I'm talking about the Alex Smith Foundation scholarship I received. Here's it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going in a commercial right now, y'all. We're in commercial right now, y'all. Page 55, I talk about the Alex Smith. I said, uh, a few days later, I attended Pam's retirement party. I had an opportunity to once again thank the people I loved and all those who had contributed to me graduating without debt. I was a recipient of the Alex Smith Foundation Scholarship. At that time, Alex Smith was a quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. During my time with Alex Smith Foundation, my dear mentor, Karen Martin, taught me to always express gratitude and be thankful for what you have. Look at that. It don't matter what page you turn to. Oh, is that you, Robert? Robert, 
Make sure you uh, DM me your shirt size. Shout out to Robert. Thank you, Robert. I'm going to have to purchase your book, too. I'm going to go to your website. I'm going to purchase your book as well. Matter of fact, here's what I'll do, Robert. I, I can't tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to do something. I, I'm going to do something. Robert, I'm going to contact you offline. I have something that I'm going to do. And trust me, you're going to be very thankful when I do this, Robert, because you show, because you bought one for me, I'm going to buy many from you. I have something I'm going to do. So make sure you DM me, say, hey, Sade, you told me to remind you that you're going to do something big and grand for me. Just for, just say, when you, per, when, let me tell you one thing about when you do for me, I do for you 10 times even greater. So Robert, I got something up. I got, I got something for you. Okay. I got something big for you, Robert. All right. So esteem. Now, now we're done with the commercial esteem. Self-respect. Oh, I know you lying. Somebody else just bought a I know you lying. Sh shut up. Yo, I didn't. <laughs> Yo, y'all are going crazy with the book buying. I promise you, somebody literally just bought another book. I'm not even lying. I'm not making this up. I'm going to go on my email when I get off this live. Just to show y'all I'm not lying. People are literally buying these books right now. Had I known this, I'd have been going live. I'd have been going live every day. Shut up. I'm not lying. They buying the books like hot cake. If you don't have this book in your... Watch. Let me show you again how great my books are. I'll turn any page and watch this. Oh, I, the golden rule. There's no greater opportunity than the one you have now. Let me... Let me okay. Oh, look at it. Page 165 in my book. I'm not lying. I just randomly turned. This is a quote from me, your dearest, Shade Burrell. Oh, shout out to my nephew, Nasir, who just joined the live. What's up, nephew? I said, take full advantage of the opportunities. I said, oh, I have, I take full advantage of the opportunities I have now because I know others are watching to see what I do with the first opportunity. Boy! Yo, what's up, Yasmin? What are you doing with the first opportunity? Oh, I'm telling you, esteem. Let's get back on it, y'all. Shout out to all y'all who just purchased the book. Shout out to all those who just purchased the book. All right, let's go. Esteem. Now you got self-respect for yourself. You stop doing silly stuff when you have self-respect, when you have self-esteem. Oh, when I was in my 20, I had no self-esteem. I didn't know it, but boy, I didn't have no self-esteem. If I only could list the stupid stuff I did when I didn't have, I had no esteem. I had none. So I had no self-respect. I didn't respect myself. So I, I, in my book, what are you reaching for? For those of you who just purchased it, purchased the what are you reaching for book, I have in there how to stop dealing with crumbs. I had all kinds of crumbs in my life. when Crumbs are people, places, things, and situations that you should not entertain. Have you ever dropped the cake on the floor? You pick up the whole cake. You don't pick up the crumbs and say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the crumbs. You don't entertain crumbs. You sweep that up and throw it in the trash. But the cake, you pick up the cake. And when you don't have self-respect, self-esteem, and you don't, you don't have freedom or strength, you know what you do. You entertain people and situations and things that you should never entertain. Why do you do that? Because, again, when we look at Maslow hierarchy of need, we don't even have the basics met. Met, and as as, as as a black woman, I have I have I have entertained crumbs. Whatever your race is, just put it in front. As a as a white woman, as a white man, as a as a Hispanic woman, as a and I want you to say that. The reason why I want you to say that is because I want you to call it out. Look at that. Let me tell you. See, look, while I'm talking right now, another another thing just came in. It said, Sade, you paid your bill at $77 The Cox Cable. Shout out to Cox Cable, although my internet's barely working. Shout out to them for sending me an email, reminding me I paid them money. Again, I'm able to pay those bills because I follow Maslow hierarchy of needs. I now have respect for myself. There are people who have no access to me. How many people have access to you who should not have access to you? How many people have access to you and they should not have access to you? They should never have access to you. You are a cake. And if you haven't read my book, what are you reaching for? 
you will understand why I say that you are a cake and we don't entertain crumbs. We just don't. My uncle, my dear uncle, Uncle Herbie, he used to always say this. This is what my Uncle Herbie used to say. He used to come out. And see, our, our last name is uh, Rainwater. That's our original last name. He'd say, uh, you don't know who we are. He said, that's the problem with the fact they don't know who we are. He used to always say that. He, I used to be like, man, what he talking about? He probably, man, he just tripping. But it was there. Now I understand what he meant by that. When you recognize how great you are, when you begin to, to walk in it, when you begin to encourage yourself, you ain't got to listen to a YouTube video. You ain't got to listen to a person. You just wake up in the morning. You say, I am great because I am great because I come from greatness. When you, when you, when you, when you wake up and you say those things to yourself, oh, it does something to your self-esteem. When you, when you, when you get done, see a bill just, a bill that I just paid earlier today just came in. You know how great I feel about that. I ain't asked nobody to borrow no money. Yeah, nobody borrowed no money. I did not ask nobody to borrow money to pay that bill. You know how you know how great I feel that I'm getting ready after this live. I'm getting off this live. Go eat me some dinner. Eat my dinner. And then when I get done with dinner, I'm going to church in my house. Because there's church. You can't, it's illegal to go to church in the buildings. That's a side note, just in case the people watching. But nevertheless, you know what that does to your esteem? To my status, you can't disrespect me no more. You can't control me no more. I'm telling y'all this. Two weeks ago, I had to encourage myself. I had seen something that I didn't like, and I'm going to be vulnerable. I seen something that I didn't like, and I read some stuff that I didn't Oh, my nephew requesting to go live with me. Hold on, nephew. I might go live with you in a second. Just don't say no crazy stuff on here when I go live with you. Um, But... Someone tried to bring me down. They said some terrible things. Terrible things. I was like, wow. And someone said to me, Shada, ain't you going to have a rebuttal? You going to say something back? Ain't you going to send a, uh, 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 what do they call it? A cease and desist, a desist letter? What a little fancy. The one the lawyer sent out to say, hey, if you don't stop talking about us, we're going to uh, sue you. I said, no. No, baby. I'm not going to. Oh, no. I'm not doing that. My self-esteem is high. I don't want them to have access to it. I don't even want them. You start thinking different. You start saying to yourself, I'm not even going to let them know it's, this is even bothering me. And then you run into them at the next day. Oh, here's the perfect example. All right, y'all. Hey, if, if my you don't want to miss this story. If it's freezing right now, get off this one and go to my YouTube. If it's freezing on Instagram. I'm about to share a story with y'all. I had a mentor. She was my first mentor in this program that I used to be part of when I was in college. And her and her husband were great to me. I mean, really great. They would take me out to eat. They like they would, you know, just really good people. Or I thought so. And then when I got pregnant uh, with my daughter, now mind you, I was married. Wasn't like, you know, and, and not, not that that even matters. If I wasn't married, who cares? None of your business. I wasn't asked you to put food in my kid's stomach. Nevertheless, um, uh, this mentor, I just always thought that she disappeared off the face of the earth. I'm like, I wonder whatever happened to her. Like, then maybe two years ago, I hadn't seen her in almost 10 years. Someone asked me, Shade, can you come to this uh, event and speak on her behalf? I said, yeah, I remember what she did for me when I was like 18, 19, 20. Yeah, no problem. So I go and I go speak, gave this phenomenal speech about her. And her husband. Her husband was right there. My other mentor, who, because I always wonder why they placed me with a different mentor. I never knew why. So then my other mentor, who, who I've known since I was 18 years old, she said, she walked up to me, she said, God darn it, Sade, you're such a politician. You're great at it. I, I can't wait to see what you're going to do in your life. You're great at this, Sade. You're, you're absolutely amazing. And I'm playing it off. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm good at this. I, I know. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm not understanding what she's talking about. Then she said, Shade, gosh darn it. Only someone, a good, a good politician, status like you, would be able to go up there and give such an amazing speech about someone who didn't want to be your mentor because you got pregnant. Wait, what? <laughs> what? That's the reason? What? 
So I'm just playing it off like, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, huh? I bet, I bet, man, that's, so I'm dying inside. I'm dying. Like, that's the reason she didn't want to be my mentor? She thought I was going to fail. I'm at her funeral speaking with a master's degree. You see this? This book don't just say Sade Burrell. Where my name at? It says Sade Burrell MSW. Soon to be Dr. Burrell. And I'm speaking. But if I wasn't in the place I was at, again, when we look at Maslow hierarchy of need, my self-esteem is increased. Can you imagine someone turning their backs on you because you decided to have a child and they thought that you were going to fail and you earned a master from the University of Southern California? I run a program. I one of the top community colleges in San Diego. I one of the best programs that serve foster youth. And I, 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 will, I will venture out to say in, in, in the state of California, soon to be nationwide. And this person said those things. This is why it's so important when we look at Maslow hierarchy of needs for us to follow those particular steps. Because my self-esteem for a second was shot. I immediately got myself back together. Got myself back together real quick. Again, that self-respect is something about self-respect. I only got a few more minutes, so I got to go to this to this last one. Um, self-actualization, self-actualization. I'm saying probably incorrectly. I apologize. Um, it's the desire to become uh, the most that one can be. Most people never reach that level. They never really reach that level. There, there's very few people in this world who, who reach that level. And what is that level? That level is like I've accomplished it all. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I, 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 I've, I've accomplished it all. All my goals, all my aspirations, they, they're, they're, they're accomplished. Yeah. They, like, when you're laying on your deathbed, can you say, I've done all that I've been assigned to do? I remember um, when I used to go to this, this, this Babylon church, and for those of you that don't know what Babylon church is, it's, Babylon means confusion. Um, I used to go to this church. I grew up in this church, and uh, Always loved his name was Pastor Cooper, Dr. Cooper. And whenever he would end a sermon, he would always say, I've done all that I've been assigned to do. And he'd go on and talk. So when it's time for you to say goodbye to those who you love, can you actually say that you've done all that you've been assigned to do? Most people never really reach that. It's always either their life is cut short unexpectedly or they just it, it wasn't possible for whatever reason right so again let's start at the bottom you got food shelter clothing start at the bottom we got food shelter clothing right, you got safety needs and, and, and that refers to personal security employment resources health and property right and then you got love and belonging that's when you can start having sex now you're not broke and you start having great friendships because you're not begging for money and you can start having a sense of family because now your whole family is getting themselves together as well. Right. And now when it's time to have the family dinner, you're not running around you know, fighting each other. Right. And then esteem. Now you got self-respect. Can nobody bring you down? Nobody. Nobody can bring you down. Oh, no. Right. And then the last one is self-actualization meaning that you've done all you've been assigned to do. So with that being said, I want to make sure that um, that was tonight's uh, class. We got four minutes left before this thing is going to shut off. Um, this, is, uh, this is night school with Professor Burrell, where I teach about life, the things that they should be teaching y'all, um, not only in college, not only uh, it's it, 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 it your place of employment, but wherever you go, they should be teaching you these, these type of uh, lessons, right? And I make it very simple, as simple as possible. So if anyone has a question, just go ahead and type it. You see a little question mark thing? Go ahead and type it in. I'll wait a few. Um, and for those of you who bought my book, thank you so much. Truly appreciate it. I promise you, you are going to enjoy it. You are definitely going to enjoy it. Um, and the Opportunity Guide as well. This is a great book. I purposely made it a pocket book. 
so that people can carry it around however they want to, etc. Right. So uh, with that being said, you guys make sure you guys pick up a book. Uh, remember, those of you who who basically if you buy if you buy the book within the next three mi minutes, whether it's this book or what are you reaching for? The, um, no matter which book you buy, uh, you will uh, receive a free T-shirt with it. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to be sending out T-shirts and uh, I said a uh, mother's motivating mother's either pen, uh, uh, pen that you pin on you and a, an actual writing pin. Right. Right. Yep. 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 All right. So if y'all have no question, I'll wait a few seconds. Anybody have any questions? I'll wait a few. I'm going to try to come on again tomorrow. I'll be on tomorrow again at 5, 5 o'clock. Got to go cook me some dinner. Got to go eat. All right. All right, all right. Logging off. Y'all, 